Is Andrew raised his hand first, so we'll let Andrew go. Please kindly unmute and ask your question. Perhaps tell us where you're joining from as well, Andrew. Oh, thank you. My name is Andrew. I'm joining from uh, Cambridge. Um, please, uh, you. Anyway, it's, uh, my question still revolves around the the politics aspect that you're talking about. I saw a video yesterday about uh, some um, Eastern leaders. And I mean uh, the Arab world. They were trying to advise the West that they should stop being politically correct and they should open their eyes to the reality. I don't want to talk about what the advice was actually on, but it directs me to the, the statement you made the other time that sometimes you make decisions based on politics rather than what you... you uh, how do I put that word? What's uh, what you think should be the so has, has there ever been a time where there is a conflict between what is politically correct and what you think is should as uh, would I say as a Christian or uh, was there any other at that time where there is a conflict between that and how do you navigate that water? Mm. That's a very that's a very good question, Andrew. Very good question. <laughs> I think I mean. In terms of the, com let's start with the context that you gave. So, there are Arab nations that, of course, are uh, on the ascendancy. They have a lot of oil. Um, they have really inspiring plans for the next four or five decades. You know, some of them have had plans that they're executing around building more infrastructure, bringing sports to places like Saudi Arabia and um, building financial services, etc. Huge, huge focus on development in those countries. And they also benefit from uh, not having uh, or having consistency. So if you have a sheikh who is the head of state for a country and they say, well, I have a 40 year plan, the, the fact that they don't have a democratic system or a, a, a significant democratic system means that they're then able to not necessarily uh, ad, uh, have to change course based on the political current. Uh, whereas in, in the West in particular, you know, we have a challenge where, you know, we all have an opportunity to uh, have a say, not just in the West, but in the West, we'll talk about the West now, have a say when about who who leads us every four to five years, if, if it's working correctly. And so in, in Western politics, the first two years are spent trying to deliver an agenda. And then the, 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 the latter part, the second half, is probably spent focused on trying to uh, uh, make sure you have the privilege to continue to lead. And that doesn't help for long-term decisions. And that doesn't help for making decisions that perhaps are in the best interest of a country. Because if a country feels like it might want something that you think is not necessarily the, the best decision or beneficial in the short term then you'll still perhaps go that way because there is a tension that you might be out of office now that is how it works that's how it works now as a christian i mean that, sorry to be so crude about it but that you know the reality is you know Keir Starmer becomes prime minister in, uh in this year which is very likely um the first two years perhaps will be spent focused on his agenda um usually usually the second uh, second half of his premiership will be spent trying to convince everybody that he's good enough, <laughs> right? And that's just, yeah, it's not ideal. It doesn't help. Now, as Christian, I, I think that there have been Christians involved in politics, whether that's democracy or or a dictatorship or whatever you want to call it, for, for, for thousands of years. Oh, well, people who have a faith for thousands of years. You know, we had Daniel who was, who was, who was there. Um, and was able to function in a, in a pagan setting. And so it's less about necessarily as a Christian, always being able to get your, your personal objectives delivered or your personal views delivered in, in a secular setting. It's more about you demonstrating that you are different, that you have the right values, that when they, when your opinion is sought, that your opinion is sound and that you remember those who are, are uh, most marginalized in your thinking um so the poor the widows etc it's a, it's almost the way I, you see a christian in public life is it, your job is to express god's common grace for everybody um and there's a reason why we have structures like this and they're ordained by god because 
because we need to make sure there's a system for us to be able to have roads and hospitals and infrastructure. And so, you know, it's very much an expression of common grace. But then you're then, but then from a relationship perspective, you then have an opportunity to be a light that can then share God's saving grace. And these are two separate things. Um, common grace is what everybody can have access to. Um, whether you're dealing with somebody who is homeless or somebody that is disabled, etc. As a Christian, we should fight uh, for that common grace to be shared. And then that saving grace is what is free for everybody. But perhaps folks need to, of course, choose and be insulted in the earth will allow us to demonstrate why that saving grace is so powerful and so important. Um, and so that, that's how I navigate being in, in uh, public life. Well, Samuel Kasimu, thank you very much for the um, man of integrity. You gave me your word at the end of last year, uh, and you're here today. So thank you very much for, uh, for being with us. Um, apologies, we had to change the plans to having you down in Cambridge physically, but we will have you back uh, in August during that program at Anglia Ruskin University. Um, Andrew, who's actually the president and one of the key organizers of that event, is with us as well this evening. So thank you very much for joining. I mean, and then live events uh, in the evening. So yeah, we're really uh, excited about this soft launch. People coming to enjoy it. Of course, all of the backers as well from the crowd fund having special events for them. And then we'll open full time in September. Great, great, great. Well, we'd love to have a Soul Mama in Cambridge. Oh. I think I, I mentioned that already. I think we should uh, do Soul it. Soul Mama Cambridge. Let's go for it. <laughs> looking, looking forward to that. We yeah, can't just have it in Stratford, in London. We need, we need so mama. We um, need it everywhere. My, my Cambridge crew would say yes, uh, yes. Let's that. do it. Let's do <laughs> it. <laughs> do, do we have a website for? I mean, for those yeah. who want to be connected to get involved, do you mind just sharing that? Absolutely, yeah. Um, <laughs> Thank you, Andrew. I know you'll be there. Uh, yeah, the the website is soulmama.co.uk. Invite Andrew just to just quickly. Um, pray for our two uh, speakers uh, this evening. Uh, Mr. Andrew, do you want to just uh, unmute yourself? Thank you. Oh, thank you, uh, my brother. It's a great pleasure to uh, be asked to do this. Uh, and I'm very glad, uh, in spite of the heights on um, Yolanda and then Samuel has reached, they are still faithful to God. And I could see that's really being reflected in their thoughts and of course how they share. So uh it's quite inspiring and I'm really glad for this talk tonight. So thank you for the organizers. So let us pray. Father, we thank you for this blessed moment. We appreciate you for bringing us together for this wonderful program. Father, we thank you for the lives of these two who um servants of yours they you've blessed them with so much gifts and they have not returned into themselves of law they've shared it with many people and that works as how what we are seeing at this moment he said blessed are those who hunger and test for righteousness for they shall be filled despite their status they are still testing for your righteousness and i thank you lord we thank you lord for feeding them with more and more of this Father, we bless you. We appreciate you for their lives. We thank you for this is just the beginning because you are taking them even to greater heights. Lord, we worship you. We bless your holy name. You are righteous. You are, you are faithful to your horse all. And that is why you have joined this as a step for all those who are aspiring to be something like this. You said you have not given us the spirit of fear, but of power of love and of sound mind. So they have taught us that no matter the heights we want to reach, we can reach it. No matter what we want to achieve we can achieve this father we thank you for this wonderful moment we bless your holy name we thank you for what we have learned tonight we thank you for the lessons that we have received and we thank you for what you're going to make use of it in our life to do oh lord thank you father for the family who that you have created through this oh lord and we thank you for which are continue to go to newer and greater greater heights in this lord so, Father, we bless your holy name. We glorify you. Thank you for this. It's not going to be the end. This shall be the start of greater things that we're going to do together. This shall be as they are moving ahead in their lives also. We will continue to work 
them, and we will never depart from your path, O oh Lord. We will, you have established our feet in this path. We will never depart from you, and we continue to grow even stronger and stronger in your path, O oh Lord. Father, we thank you for the grace of our Lord upon these uh, two servants of yours, and we thank you for you will continue to extend that grace to every person who is aspiring to even achieve even this kind of height, O oh Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we pray for uh, the programs that are coming ahead. I, I know uh, Samuel has um, promised to be there, and I'm hoping Yolanda also will be there as well, so that we can continue this great talk, and we will continue to achieve even greater things among the among people of this law, and we will continue to inspire many people to be that great that you have, that of, to achieve the great gift of your deposit name. Blessed be your holy name, Lord. Father, we commit everyone who has been on the call tonight, oh Lord, if you're like uh, Professor Monoa, we say, if we are just talking without the audience, we are talking to ourselves. So we appreciate you, Lord, for the lives of everyone who has been in the call, and we thank you for the lessons that they've picked from this, and we thank you for how they are going to make use of it for their own, their own journey and their own career, and we we thank you for the height that you're going to take all of us to. This is just a testament that we are all going to greet and greet height. Blessed be your holy name, Lord. As we depart today, oh Lord, we go with us. Let your spirit continue to guide us. Next time we are coming back, we will come back with the back full of testimony. Many, many others will bring back to your uh, to your kingdom, oh Lord, and we will be a source of of turning points of, of healing souls and bringing souls, many souls to your kingdom, O oh Lord. And we, that we, are you have, uh, you have pushing us forward, we will not, we will not depart from your path, O oh Lord. We will continue to abide under your shadow, O oh Lord. Blessed be your holy name, Father, for your answer our prayer tonight. Forever we worship you, O oh Lord. For in Jesus' holy and anointed name, we have prayed. Amen. Thank you. And thank you very much, uh, Mr. Andrew. Mr. Andrew is the president of the uh, and the Ruskin uh, Nigerian Society, but also very active uh, for the Central Association of Nigerian Students in the UK and many, many other organizations uh, across uh, the UK.